Hello and welcome to Microsoft Live at EDU. My name is Evan Archella and I'd like to talk with you about sharing folders in SkyDrive. SkyDrive is a great tool for storing documents and other types of files, but it's also a great tool for sharing that information with other people and actually working together on documents. On the left hand side of your SkyDrive homepage, you may see an area called Shared, and under that you may have what's called a public folder. If you used the Office Live Workspace as the predecessor to this version of SkyDrive, you likely received a public folder when your account was migrated over to the new version of SkyDrive. If you do not have a public folder in your SkyDrive homepage, that's okay. You can create one and I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes. The nice thing about a public folder, if I was to click this one here, you'll notice that under Shared With, it says Everyone and in parentheses it says Public. A public folder is just that. When it is shared with everyone, that means everyone. So anyone out on the internet, wherever they happen to be in the world, if they had the URL to your public folder, they could come in and they could view those files. Now it's typically a view-only permission setting, so they're not going to be able to add or edit or delete information from here. But they would be able to come out and take a look at that information. This is a nice capability for teachers that have a mixed environment of students of different ages. For SkyDrive, if you want to be able to add or edit documents in the browser like we looked at uh, in our Office Web Apps screencasts, that requires a sign-in. And you have to be 13 or older to be able to sign in to SkyDrive. The nice thing about public folders is they don't require a sign-in. So you could send the link to your public folder to a 12-year-old, for example, if you had a mixed class of 12 and 13-year-olds, and that 12-year-old would still be able to come out and download information from your public folder, even though they couldn't add or edit uh, or delete information on their own. So if you're looking for a way to kind of push content out, keep in mind it is truly public. It goes everyone in the world who had that URL could come and see the information it is view only and it does not require a sign in now regardless of how you want to use a public folder if you've shared something with everyone you need to make sure that you get that link out to those people if you click the share drop down you'll see a couple of opportunities here one says send a link one says get a link send a link will send a link automatically to someone from Windows Live so the email is actually processed and sent from the Windows Live domain if you're using the Outlook Live hosted exchange solution a lot of times schools will impose closed campus policies meaning that anything from outside of your school's domain is not able to get into the exchange server messages that come from outside the domain are automatically rejected so if you use the send a link option here you may find that your message never makes it to the other person because the Outlook Live solution is blocking that as an external sender the better thing to do is go to what's called get a link get a link will give you the actual link to that folder you can then copy that link and in a separate tab I always suggest people using live at EDU go ahead and have Outlook Live open in another tab so that you can easily navigate back and forth between Outlook Live and the SkyDrive solution from here I'm gonna click new and just go ahead and paste that URL into this email message and I'm going to send it from within Outlook Live that way it's going from one internal sender to another versus risking getting bounced off of that closed campus policy if I was to route it directly from the browser just one of those things you need to keep in mind when you're running a mixed environment of an organizationally managed solution like Outlook Live and a self-managed solution like the SkyDrive capabilities I'm going to click done come back over to the public folder now I've sent that link out if my students were to come out to my folder now they could simply take this field trip permission form for example and download a local copy for themselves again it doesn't require a sign in to get into this folder because the permissions are set to everyone it is visible to everyone it does not require a sign in so I can push this out they can download it print out that permission form, sign it, and turn it in to me. Now if they were 13 or older, I could have created a folder for them on my SkyDrive and given them permission to it. They could deposit their homework, things like that. But they have to be 13 to be able to sign in and do that. 
Now let's talk about another way you might want to share files and folders. A public folder is one way. That goes to everyone. But maybe I just want to limit this to a certain group of people. Maybe we have a class project that we're working on. In this case, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it the weather project. We're going to do a project where we're going to gather some temperature readings in different locations. And you can see that this is shared with just me. But I can change that by clicking change. If you'll notice this slider, if I was to drag the slider all the way up to everyone, this has suddenly become a public folder. So just because the folder is named public doesn't always necessarily mean it is truly a public folder. The folder name has really nothing to do with the permissions. I created a public folder. I gave it everyone permission just for ease of use. It's called public. It just makes sense. But I could have a folder named private, drag this up to everyone, and all of a sudden that folder called private is actually a public folder. So you want to just keep that in mind. In this case, I'm going to keep the permissions at just me, but there are some specific students that I'm going to work with on this project. So what I'll do is go ahead and add them as specific users underneath the specific people field. So I can bring in whichever students I'm going to be working with, and I can decide, do I want them to be able to add and edit information, or am I going to give them view-only permission? That's going to determine the level of visibility that they're going to have for the, all of the files and other folders that may be in this shared folder. Keep in mind, if you click Next here, that'll go ahead and apply those permissions. Any permissions that you apply to a folder carry downstream. So it's always that top level, that root level folder, where the permissions are going to apply. So the three people that have permission to this folder are going to have permission to all the documents and all the other folders that I create within this weather project folder. What I need to do here is go ahead and add some files. I can just simply select a document from my computer or I could drag and drop files. I'm going to upload an Excel document in this case and go ahead and add that to the project. So now we're ready to get started working on this. We have permission to it. The file is there. We can get going on this project. Uh, also, I will need to go ahead and get these people the link to this folder. So clicking share again will give you the opportunity to select get a link. Remember, send a link is likely to get blocked by Outlook Live. Get a link. You can copy it. Go over to Outlook Live, paste it, and send it from within the domain. That way you're sure it's going to get to the right person. Let me give you some resources to think about this a little more. There's some live at EDU links here for you if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the program. You'll also be able to go to help.outlook.com if you want to learn a little bit more about the Outlook Live side of this solution. And if you go to Bing, do a search on Office Web Apps Product Guide, you'll get a detailed document with a breakdown of all of the different web apps versions and the features that are included in each. I look forward to having you on another screencast.